Hey guys, welcome back to the Revive Stronger channel. I am your host as always, Steve Hall, and we are going over 135 of the podcast with Eric Helms and Mike Irritutel. What a fantastic episode that was, and let's go over our takeaway points. Takeaway point number one is that gaining at a rate of 0.25 to 0.5% of your total body weight per week for males and females probably gives a nice ground in which we're gaining plenty of muscle, maybe a little bit of fat, and it seems to be a good working range for most people. If you try and attempt to gain much slower than this, you can't really be sure that you are gaining and whether or not there's just fluctuations going on. And if you try to gain much faster than that, we can't be sure that you're gaining much more muscle, but we can be sure you're gaining plenty more fat. So gaining at a rate of 0.25 to 0.5% of your total body weight per week on average seems to be a good rate. I will add to that that look at longer term averages, maybe look at maybe a every two weeks look at 0.5 to 1% of body weight gained just because sometimes there can be major fluctuations within one week. So that's takeaway point number one. Takeaway point number two is super interesting. It's often said that the more advanced you get because you have less potential to grow muscle, you should probably slow down the rate of pace that you're gaining weight. That makes very clear and obvious sense. However, it isn't clear within the scientific community and within just anecdote and evidence that we should slow down our rate of gain because potentially there are some benefits to being in that bigger surplus and maybe we are gaining proportionally much more fat, but we're now actually gaining the muscle that maybe we wouldn't have in the past. We can't be totally sure. So that being said, still, whether or not you're more or less advanced, it might be good for you to still stick within that 0.25 to 0.5% of body weight gain per week. Takeaway point number three is that for someone who's lifting weights, who's active, the point at which nutritional partitioning due to body fat levels is going to be highly detrimental is probably quite high, up to 20% for males to 30 to beyond that for females. So we can go quite high and not have bad nutritional partitioning. Now, that being said, it probably makes sense for competitors who do need to get to very lean body fat percentages not to push much above those high levels because obviously you then have all that fat to lose to get ready for competition. Takeaway point number four is that so long as you're not getting like very over fat for males above that 20%, for females above that 30 or so percent, then you probably don't need to worry about accumulating extra fat cells. Uh, a lot of people talk about, oh, if, if you do get quite, oh, quite overly fat to what you usually are, then you're going to gain these extra fat cells. That isn't obviously true. Um, and you need to get quite over fat to start actually developing new fat body fat cells. Um, and part of this argument is because obviously once you've got a body fat cell, you don't lose it. Uh, and then this can refill and it, it can lead to a harder uh, fat loss in future and potentially make your body composition not look as nice as you'd like to. But remember, like you have to get pretty damn fat for this to start being an issue, which might allow some of you to feel a bit less uh, worried about gaining that weight. Takeaway point number five is that there are loads of different things that you could potentially theoretically do on paper, micromanaging this minutia to try and theoretically provide a better insulin sensitivity or response. But at the end of the day, it's unlikely to do anything and it's not absolutely clear it will be doing anything in the long term. So changing your macros on rest days to training days, trying to use various supplementation strategies as a natural are unlikely to be worth the hassle that they may bring. Um, And we can't be sure that that hassle will bring anything in the long run anyway. So guys, really hope you've enjoyed these takeaways. Really hope you check out the full podcast with Eric Helms and Mike Isertel because it was a brilliant, brilliant uh, discussion between the two guys. Please enjoy that. Our favorite quote from today's podcast is from Eric Helms and he said, I can almost guarantee you if you are lifting weights and you do not have a history of insulin resistance, you are not insulin resistant. So cheers, guys. Hope you've enjoyed these takeaway points. As I said, do check out the full episode of the podcast. Do subscribe to the channel, like this, give us a comment, give us a thumbs up, share this around with your friends. And as always, revive stronger.